So first off here, I'm just gonna make this one a bit uh, darker in the fuse and go in here to primary specular. We have two molds and one is artistic and one is physical. If I first have here the artistic, you have face and edge color. So think about the face is essentially facing towards, straight towards the camera and edge would be uh, 90 degrees away from the camera. So on an object that would be like this one angle here towards us would be facing camera. This side here would be 90 degrees away from the camera. And this is where you set how much ref reflectivity is gonna be sent back from the object. So at the moment, it's a fully diffuse render here. If I set this up to something, we're gonna see here, now it will start to look a bit like a plastic and you would have uh, probably like an edge. You can see if I only set edge here and, and no face, you can see you will only get here on the grazing angles. If I start to introduce here, you get a bit also here facing forward. This one, the fr Fresnel exponent is essentially by default at five, but if you if you go it towards zero, it's gonna favor more of this color. And if you set it back to here, it will favor more, yeah. So I don't really use this Fresnel exponent I think I've never used it to be honest. It's there. It's some kind of facing ratio relationship between face and edge color from my understanding. The next one is roughness. And this one, the roughness here is obviously how rough is the object. If I set my diffuse down, this is essentially when it's zero, it's a pure mirror. When it's one, it's very diffuse looking. And you can see here, now this one looks like a black plastic. But what if you wanna, in artistic mode, make a metal? In Render Man, metals doesn't have any diffuse contribution. So you see here, I set my gain down to zero. And if you wanna create a metal in artistic mode, you would increase the, the face and and play here with the, with the edge as well. And then it's up uh, uh, a matter of here inputting, for example, the roughness map. And let's actually input the roughness map as well here. Take my result R into specular roughness here. Yeah, we can see there's something there. This is a roughness that's from one of my texturing courses here with this nail. And it's also, you can download these textures from Gamma Road. I'm gonna make also a link in the description. If I go back to my specular lobe and take a look here at the advanced setting, we have Beckman and GGX. So what's that? The Beckman is essentially what you wanna use if you have a pure, uh, essentially a pure reflection like this, like a super shiny object, chrome or something. When you start to have a bit of roughness, the GGX is better. If you look here, let's let's take a look at here 0.5 in roughness, for example. Let's do that. Let's store this one. And now I'm going to flip this over into GGX and render the same. I'm going to snap that one. And now let's go in here and compare. You see here, this is Beckman. This is GGX. You get a bit of blooming, a bit like a real object. So anytime you have roughness, set it to GGX. It, it, it will uh, help you a lot with realistic look. And you get a bit of energy, essentially blooming. That is really nice. And that's usually something you see on real objects. Related to roughness is essentially anisotropy. So if I drag this one towards minus stream there you can see you, you you get streaking going up and down if i set this one to cross you can see now the streaking is goes in this direction and this is essentially something you would mainly use also with a, um, a tangent feel map so i'm just gonna take a pixar texture hook this one up to a pixar tangent feel and going here to their page i downloaded these images here and converted them to text files so i'm gonna take this black and white map and apply this using a tile texture so we can see what tangent feel can do for example to anisotropic so i'm gonna browse here. This is what I set up. I have this map that is tiling across the object uh, using a, a piece of texture and a manifold. 
and here I input it into this result R into the input rotation on my tangent field here and I said result XYZ into the specular anisotropic direction here so let's take a look here now and we can see here we we get this kind of brushed metal uh, look here and we can start to play here with the rotation increase the roughness a bit and there you go so yeah now it's a matter of finding the look here we want that looks best for this so go and play with us you can download it renderman 26 manual let's take a look at the uh, bump here as, as well we can bump individual lobes make a, a whirly and make let's make a uh, bump mixer i'm gonna connect my result on ng into the layer one i'm gonna connect result n into specular bump normal and there uh, we have something that looks amazing it's a bit <laughs> much i'm gonna use my manifold to my manifold and hook it up and see what happens it's a bit much here so let's take this down considerably and and there we go so you see here, now I have a bump only this specular lobe. So if I would apply anything else, for example, like a secondary specular lobe here, uh, let's do that. I'm just gonna take down this a bit like so. Let's introduce a secondary specular lobe. So we have this rough specular and I can go in here and say, and you can see here now we have a, a rough specular lobe that is essentially on top of this one and you can see here you don't see the bump in that but it's it's quite rough this one so you will not see it but if i create this one here take it down it will almost act like a clear coat so you can see here the the secondary specular contribution is not bumped by this whirly because this one is going independently into only the first specular lobe if i however would break this connection here and now insert this one the the bump mixer into the bump normal on a global level you will see all lobes being affected by this bump and that means they're both the primary and secondary specular here let's take a look at the physical mode so until now we've only worked with artistic but you have this switch here and that is physical and this one now takes a piece of surface instead of using this artistic edge and face color you now get refraction index and extinction coefficient and these values here is not like super obvious what, what, how to get them and i made a separate video how to get the refraction index for different metals and and complex materials where people within the scientific community has used very expensive measuring devices to get these values and plotted them out on curves etc do a quick example here if i was gonna take a llama conductor because this one actually has uh, values in it. You can see here, if I go to scientific and uh, take this one 0.18, put this one into my red, and we can see here, we wanna have this one, and we can see here we start to happen. So we, we get some funky result here. And this is why it's not really user-friendly from an artistic perspective, but if you have measured values, this one could be really cool. And now extinction. So this is kind of the metallic property of a material really we want to put this one in there we want to have this one that value into green to blue there and we need to set our edge color to white now we essentially have a gold material here if i increase the i believe llama conductor by default has uh, set something like a gold type material. And you see here, you have the index of refraction in the llama and extension. You have the same here on the physical mode. It's called refraction index and extension coefficient. And, and that's the, uh, the difference. And I, I, as I said, I made a separate tutorial how to get these physical values from a refraction index database. And you also need to know the, the vis visible light spectrum. In the next episode, we're gonna take a look at the clear coat component. So if you wanna support my channel, consider subscribing and hit that bell notification. And why don't you leave a comment as well?